You're watching Off Post Live. I'm Caitlin Becker. So, ladies, how many times has this happened? You open your mailbox or your inbox, and staring right at you is another invitation for a bridal or baby shower. Too many of our precious weekends are consumed by tasteless tea sandwiches, cheesy games, and those god awful bow hats all for the time-honored tradition of showers. But why do we still practice the ritual if pretty much everyone is over it? Here to answer that question is Wendy Littner, a freelance writer and author of the HuffPost blog, Stop Inviting Me to Your Showers, Elaine Swan, a lifestyle and etiquette expert, and author of Let Crazy Be Crazy, and Megan Finley, associate publisher for the Offbeat Empire. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Oh, hi. All right. <laughs> Wedding showers, baby showers, they're all essentially the same. Wendy, you clearly don't like them, as evidenced by the title of your blog post. What is it about showers that you hate so much? Yes, I'm on a mission to save our Sundays. I, I think at their worst, they're a really antiquated tradition that has just totally outlived their purpose. Um, I just find the games insufferable. And at their best, they're just a really lame party where I don't think anyone is having fun except for the bride and her mother. I'm a bride-to-be, and I am a little apprehensive about my own shower because I really, really don't want to play stupid bridal games, and I really really don't want to wear a hat, and I refuse to have it on a Sunday. Good for you. <laughs> but, Wendy, um, does that make it not a bridal shower? If I've changed all of these things that we typically think of as showers? I think so. I mean, I think that definitely helps. I, I think definitely getting rid of the hat with the bows, I, I think you're definitely leading the charge to really improve this, this tradition that has really outlived its purpose. So... I, I think um, I, I think it definitely it definitely helps. Now, Elaine, talk to me about the tradition. Why do we keep having these bridal showers? I mean, it's sort of I do sort of get the point of for you know couples who are getting married that don't um, haven't moved in together or don't really have a home set up. This is the time where we're giving them their essentially their wedding presents because if you're anything like me, you don't like showing up to a wedding in a dress with heels and drinking all night with like a thing of fine china in your hand. Exactly. Well, you know, the tradition began with uh, brides, you know, when a bride would get married, the parents would give kind of what's called a dowry to the bride and the groom. And that's all of the essentials that a bride would need to start our new home. And so we continue to do this tradition today. But of course, you know, like you said, we add in all of the different games and the hats and the boas and so on and so forth. But the bottom line, it's just an opportunity to just honor the bride and her family and kind of send her off into the sunset, if you speak, uh, to her new life with a lot of different things. And so it doesn't necessarily have to. Every bridal shower should represent the bride and her taste as well. So it doesn't have to be some of the things that you all explained uh, if for the person who's planning a bridal shower. So, for example, you don't want that, so don't have it. Make your bridal shower something that represents you and your taste and your interest. Maybe your bridal shower is just a brunch, just an opportunity for you to get together with your friends and your loved ones in a more intimate setting. I mean, come on. When you do get married, the huge wedding with all of the guests, you really don't get a chance to kind of have those wonderful little intimate moments with people at a huge party. So the bridal shower is where you can have that opportunity to wish the bride well and, and, and share some fine things in that fine china or lingerie or whatever it is to kind of send her on her way with her new groom. That's such a good point, I think. And I, I also think that a lot of times showers can be a missed opportunity. When you think about, um, you know, you count the years of marriage that have, the people in there have lived, like between the aunts, the cousins, and the grandmothers and everyone there, I think it's it's a real missed opportunity for people to really be able to actually share some wisdom and um, maybe give the bride to be some advice. Um, rather than a blender, I think is is more effective <laughs> in the long run. You know, oh yeah, Megan. <laughs> Uh, you know, Wendy brings up this very interesting point, and and Elaine had mentioned it first that these this can be an opportunity to really sit down and talk to people who will probably be guests at your wedding that you likely won't be able to talk to at your wedding because you're so busy. But the last bridal shower I went to for one of my friends, which was years ago because I try to avoid them, uh, it was like a bad show. We got there, 
There wasn't a lot to do. And then we sat down and commenced opening the presents. And it was the awkward very, torture is form of you really you know, can't talk to the people next to you because right. we're all looking at the person opening up every dish or a spatula and another spatula and a washcloth, one towel, and then the next thing, there are three more towels. So it was so <laughs> painful. How do you avoid doing these things if so, someone else is throwing you the shower? Sure. Well, so, a lot of our so people what, don't. Okay, I'm sorry. So oh, here's what you do. If you are the person who does not enjoy going to showers, but you feel obligated to do so because of your relationship with the person, then what you do is just set a time frame. You tell yourself, okay, I'm going to go. And I'm going to stay for, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, and then I'm going to leave. And you let the person know in advance, hey, listen, I'm going to come to the shower. I'm not going to be able to stay long, but I do want to go come and pay you my respects and wish you well. And then you do that. You stick to your time frame and you say, you know what, I'm going for one hour and then I'm out of here because I can't sit through this whole thing. It's all about your taste. And one of the things that you said earlier in your opening is that it seems like it's something that just, you know, the bride and her mom really enjoy. And and that's the thing. The bride and her mom are really enjoying this moment. So this is their moment to really enjoy and our moment to kind of be spectators but wishing them well at the same time. So you don't have to. And then if you don't want a shower yourself, then don't have one or either set parameters and guidelines on how you want your shower to look. That way you don't right. show there's, up at the shower. There's totally kind of no reason all why all the showers need to be these stuffy, traditional yeah. sit-around and open presents. If you have any control, hopefully you do, over the shower, you can do things like have a go play pinball with your girls, like, you know, or a no gift shower or a stock the bar party where everybody brings alcohol and then you play with that. And you know, there's no opening <laughs> necessary except if you're opening a bottle. Um, That's such a great you, idea. It's all about personalizing it and making it fun right. for that particular bride. I mean, we it, it doesn't have to be the thing where we're sitting opening gift after gift after gift. And then that's the other thing, too. You do not have to open your gifts at the shower. But, exactly. of course, you do have to say thank you. You know what, though? You don't have to sit there and open the My gifts. My mom told me I have to open the gifts at the shower, and she is the one throwing the shower. Throwing the because, shower. And, yeah. and, and, Megan, maybe you can speak from personal experience. How do you sort of, you know, sort of figure out what the balance is between what you want as a bride and what makes people like your mom or your grandmother happy? Because when it comes down to it, is it that much out of my life to give up a Saturday or a Sunday or out of my friends' lives to make my 89-year-old grandmother really happy because she wants to watch me open 85 pairs of dishes? Yeah, absolutely. I the only shower and this may come a shock to you that I've been to is my own, and it was forced upon me, um, and it was very important. <laughs> Apparently, my friends aren't marriage material, um, and it was important for my mother that I sit down and have the gift opening experience, and so I did uh, have that, and I did that for her. Um, and then I was thrown another shower by a family friend, and at that point, I was like, no gifts. We're just gonna party. We're just going to have a pool party that's going to be that kind of shower. It's going to be boys and girls because most of my friends are men. So I did the whole, I gave up, gave up one of my Sundays to do the present opening thing. And then um, the next shower that I was offered, I was like, we're going to do something totally different. And we're going to make it fun for everybody. So I love it. Now, <laughs> Wendy, great. Wendy I have a question it. for you. Wendy, there is a commenter writing in, Lena, who writes in and says, this is so weird to me. Why are you bored at these parties? Aren't the invitees not your friends? I have fun with my friends, no matter the circumstance, I guess. What is it specifically about the shower that makes it not a fun party? I think it's the cheesy games. I think those are really... Those, those really ruin it. I think I really have to put my foot down at wrapping my friend in toilet paper to make a toilet paper wedding dress. I, I completely understand what the comments are saying. I do. Everybody loves celebrating and spending time with their friends. It's just these sort of ritualized obligations kind of suck the fun out of it sometimes, especially Absolutely. like counting the jelly beans in the, in, out of the jar. I don't think they're even doing this at six-year-old birthday parties, let alone grown women having to sit around and do this. So if it was really just is sort of something that's laid back and fun that's sort of different from the ritualized aspect of it of people sitting around sort of with their legs crossed as you say watching people open you know another tea towel and another dust buster and one of the not first really able to talk wrote, one of the first posts i wrote for offbeat bride when i got hired was torture-free wedding showers 
with no toilet paper <laughs> game. Cruelty to make free. Game. Like, cruelty free. I love it. Absolutely. There's it's, no reason you have to have stuffy games. You can do, you know, crafting parties instead of the toilet paper dress or, you know, um, Alice in Wonderland showers where you're eating candy. You know, it doesn't have to be toilet I'm paper. I'm candy. Uh, it's interesting <laughs> that everyone keeps using the politically correct term of people attending showers, people watching you open gifts. When it comes down to it, it's not people, it's women and unfortunate children who get dragged along with their parents. <laughs> that's that's, that's, really, that's, that's really really The traditional I mean, showers are women, and is the gender-specific aspect of it something that should change to make it feel less like a traditional shower? Oh, absolutely. 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 I mean, like, I think we see that so often now. We see the yeah. co-ed showers um, that absolutely. have various themes. And, I mean, your shower can be a margarita party where you have all sorts of different margaritas and so forth. But gender, g bringing both uh, together, both guys and girls, can really make the shower a lot of fun. It all depends on the personality of the bride. I mean, if, if, if you are a bride and you say, you know what, I'm not going to sit down and do this other thing, then come up with some other things. I mean, perhaps you and your guy have a whole lot of fun, you know, doing some sort of activity, whether it's rock climbing or ping pong or whatever it is, then make your shower part of your personality. Because then, you know, just theme it out. I, that's what I say. Yeah. Theme it out, honey. And I mean, sure there's no way that, for your that my shower would have been all women because I've been barely friends with many women. So it was definitely co-ed when it wasn't the family one. But I mean, if, if it's two men getting married, if it's two women getting married, they all, I mean, I think gender is not even an issue when it comes to showers anymore. So in the offbeat bride world, it is. It's, but, it's not. There's no reason why men shouldn't be bored and, and open up spatulas as well. I think there should be some, some real quality there. Absolutely. The question, however, there is, and I hate, to, I hate to be the one that's pushing back to all of the, the, the fun here, these things cost money, and... And if you're inviting everyone, both male and female, that you're inviting to the wedding, how do you have a really fun time with really good food and really good drinks and, you know, without breaking the bank, without essentially paying almost the same that you're going to shell out for the wedding itself? Well, I think that's where a lot of brides make the mistake. You're not supposed to do that. You don't invite everyone that's on your wedding <laughs> list to your shower. Your shower right. is a more intimate occasion for people who are very close to you. It usually involves, you know, moms and aunts and so forth, the girls who are in your bridal power party or guys who are in the bridal party, but just it's your close inner circle of friends. These are the same people that you invite over to your house for dinner or something like that. So that's where right. I think some brides are making a mistake, where they're trying to t have two huge weddings. So don't do that. Your wedding guest list is not the same as your shower list. It's a much smaller group of people that share the same interest as you. So that way, when you do have your table tennis themed uh, shower, it'll be all your friends who know that that's your favorite thing to do, and they'll get in on the fun as well. So. Absolutely. Smaller, more intimate parties that are more catered yeah. to your interests. I haven't even finalized my guest list yet for my wedding, but every time we try <laughs> to cut it down, my mother or my fiance's mother mm -hmm. or my stepmom, someone's trying to add somebody to the list. Sometimes with showers, when you really have a little bit of, you know, a little less control because uh, I'm planning my wedding, but my bridesmaids and my bridesman, because I have guys on my side of the bridal party, um, are planning my shower. So a lot of it's a surprise. So how do you, Megan, how would you recommend telling people who are planning something for you what you want without feeling like you're demanding? I mean, I hopefully they know if they're planning me a shower, we're going to be super close friends, right? They probably know that I don't want to do the toilet paper dress and they probably know they want it to be plied with alcohol. Um, so... You know, drop in hints, maybe showing them things on a website you're looking at, like the torture free stuff on Offbeat Bride. Um, but hopefully, they're, if they're throwing you a shower, they're close to you, right? They should probably know you. Well, one of the things that I say, for example, in my book, I say be brutally honest without being brutal. And that means sometimes you have to just be very straightforward and to the point without tearing the person down and making them feel like you don't appreciate them. So just right. like she said, giving them, uh, you know, letting them know, hey, you know what, as you're planning for the shower, I just wanted to share with you some of my favorite things or, 
some of my really great ideas, just things like that, so that way they have something to go off of. Of course, like, like Megan said, they're your friends, so they should know you, but it's really important for you to be open and be honest without being brutal and letting them know your likes and your dislikes, so that way you do have a shower. You end up with a shower that you can actually enjoy. So if there's some things that you find on the Internet or some activities you enjoy doing, let them know. And, for example, if you say no cheesy games, then say that. I mean, uh, I get clients all the time that say to me, you know what, this is the music we do not, absolutely do not want played at our wedding. So take that same approach with your shower as well. Let them know. Now, Wendy, just as we're, as we're kind of coming to a close here, what, you know, what do you do if you're the bride who loves cheesy games? You want to guess the jelly beans <laughs> or, or the mother-to-be who wants to play the game where you're guessing the candy. You've played that one. I'm sure I have at showers where you have to guess the mushed-up chocolate bar in the diaper, <laughs> yeah. which is a real classy game. That's a real classy how, yeah. how, When does this become about the guests that are coming who are spending their Saturdays or Sunday with them, who are, you know, are coming to spend time with them, offering a present, at what point do you consider what you think your guests might want to do versus you want to be, um, you know, toilet paper mummy bride? Well, I, I, I don't know if I'm the best person to ask because <laughs> I get really nervous and was, I think I was more worried about my guests than I was about myself at my wedding and my shower. But I think, uh, you know, it is okay to also just sort of embrace who you are and if that's what you want to do. And if you want to be wrapped in toilet paper, then I guess you go for it and... Because your guests will have to just suck it up for, <laughs> throw, throw for two hours. Throw a embrace the cheese <laughs> wedding shower. It. Go and like the, hipster ironic with it and just embrace it. Do all the cheesy things and make it like, yes, I know, we're getting cheesy. This is our time to just be silly. Okay, go all out. there's your theme, a cheesy shower. There yes, you go. embrace there's the cheese theme. shower. <laughs> Megan, I really think that only works if there are copious copious amounts of alcohol <laughs> at the and shower. At least it only would work if there's copious amounts of alcohol. At least it would have to be for me. Elaine, Megan, Wendy, I want to thank you so much for joining me. Thank you thank so you much. Brother. Congrats on your wedding. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun at your shower. Oh, oh my shower. It's in September. I don't know what's happening with it. I'm already nervous. Okay. But I know we're all going to wear big, like, Kentucky Derby hats. That's the only thing. Oh, oh, about. There, there we go. That's my only input. Stick around. There's a lot more coming up on HuffPost Live.